Hello everyone, I am Hemant Kumar, one of the teaching assistant for this course. In today's lecture, we will learn how to design antennas using I3D. In previous lecture, my colleague already introduced the basics of I3D software. So, in today's lecture, we will design the basic antennas such as microstrip patch antenna and monopole antenna and some other antennas. So, let us start with I3D. First, start with M grid, then we will have this window. In this window, we have file option, we will design a new antenna. Here, we are going to design a microstrip patch antenna at X band and uh, the substrate we have used is RT Duroid 5880. So, first we have to select the dielectric layer from this option. You can see here Z top, Z top is the thickness of our substrate that we can give as a 0 0.031 inches which is equivalent to 0.787 mm. Then dielectric constant of the substrate which is 2.2, then lowest tangent of the substrate 0 0.001, then press OK. So, we have introduced one dielectric layer, then press OK. So, a layout editor window is introduced. In this window, we will design our patch antenna. The dimensions of the microstrip patch antenna, you can find out easily using the formulas available. You can also easily find out these using the line gauge in the I3D software. So, the dimension found out to be for a microstrip patch antenna at a center frequency of 9.3 gigahertz. So, at 9.3 gigahertz, we have found out the patch antenna dimensions, which is 10.2 by 10.2. So, we can select a rectangle from this uh, I3D M grid window, rectangle option, and we are going to design a metallic patch at Z is equal to 0.787. So, the length of the patch is 10.2 mm with 10.2 as we are going to design a square MSA. So, now press OK. Now, you can see a one patch at a layer of 0.787. So, next task is to give the feed. To give the feed, we will go to the entity option, go to entity option, then prop feed to patch. Now, the next is where we have to feed. The location can be taken as a L by 6. So, for this, we have optimized this and we have found out the value of feed location is 1.4 mm from the center. So, press enter. Number of segments for the circle, you can take uh, any value between 8 to 16 or 32, it is ok. So, I am taking as a 16 start Z coordinate which is 0 and Z coordinate that is our uh, substrate height, negative level 0, positive level, it is generally taken as a between 1 by 10 to the 1 by 100th of the substrate thickness. So, it is taken as a 1 by 100th of our substrate thickness that is 0 0.787 and the radius of a connector which is 0 0.6 for a SMA connector. So, 0.6, then press OK. So, you can see we have introduced the coaxial feed. Next task is to save this geometry. So, save this, save as, you can save as a test X MSC X band. So, now we want to simulate it, to simulate we have to give the some parameters. First is meshing frequency, which is the highest frequency. So, the maximum frequency you can take as a 12 gigahertz and the number of cells per wavelength, because it is a simple structure, 30 mesh cells are enough and automatic edge cell as in the previous class it was explained, what is AEC. So, select AEC layer 1, then press OK. Then we have to give the number of frequency samples. So, enter. 
स्टार्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी 8.5 पॉइंट फाइव गीगा हर्ट्स एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी यू वॉन्ट टू सिमुलेट अप टू नाइन पॉइंट एट गीगा हर्ट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द स्टार्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी इज रफली वन पॉइंट थ्री गीगा हर्ट्स सो यू कैन टेक द नंबर ऑफ पॉइंट सच दैट द स्टेप फ्रीक्वेंसी विल बी पॉइंट जीरो वन गीगा हर्ट्स सो द सॉफ्टवेयर सिमुलेट्स आवर डिजाइन एट एवरी पॉइंट जीरो वन गीगा हर्ट्स डिफरेंस सो यू कैन टेक एज अ वन थर्टी वन सैम्पल्स देन प्रेस ओके इफ यू सेलेक्ट दिस ऑप्शन क्लिक ऑन दिस देन इट विल सेलेक्ट ऑल द पॉइंट्स देन इट विल सिमुलेट एट ऑल द पॉइंट्स विच विल टेक अ वेरी हाई टाइम सो नो नीड टू क्लिक ऑन दिस ऑप्शन नाउ इट विल सेलेक्ट सम रेंडम पॉइंट्स एंड इट विल सिमुलेट ऑन दोज पॉइंट्स and to find out the radiation pattern you have to select this option also click on this a new window will appear here you will see the angle total thetas and total phi's in the 3d there is a theta elevation angle and phi azimuthal angle so 37 means because phi varies from 0 to 360 so it divides the total angle 0 to 360 in 37 samples so every sample will be at an angle of 10 degree similarly for this uh, theta because theta varies from 0 to 180 so it divides the whole range in 37 samples each samples having a difference of 5 degree so you can see 0 5 10 15 and in 5 you can see 0 10 20 degree so and next thing is press okay now you can simulate it for simulation press okay it will take 5 to 10 second to simulate it after simulation we will see the characteristics of the antenna s parameters vswr smith chart and then we will see the radiation pattern also so now we can see a new window has been appeared in this window you can see add graph graph definition in this add graph delete graph edit so first add graph in this we will add the s parameters we can add s parameters smith chart vswr so first we want to see the s parameter click on this then we want to see the s parameter in db so click on the db option then press okay we want to see the smith chart also then press uh, add graph add smith chart press okay then again add graph if you want to see vswr also vswr is generally seen in linear scale so click vswr okay vswr then press okay now close this window after closing this window you will see the results so this is our s parameter so you can see approximately at 9.3 gigahertz it is resonating so it have a S one one less than minus ten dB from this point, which is approximately nine point one, and this point is approximately nine point three five. So you can see a two fifty megahertz bandwidth for S one one less than minus ten dB has been obtained. So this is the information you can get from the S parameter. Next is Smith chart. This is our Smith chart. So from this graph, you can see this is our 50 ohm matched and uh, this at this point the frequency is 8.5 and as the frequency is increasing impedance is changing and at approximately 9.3 gigahertz it is matched with 50 ohm so it is perfectly matched with 50 ohm next is vswr vswr2 is equivalent to s11 or minus 9.6 db so for this you can Uh, see the VSWR2 bandwidth is from this point, which is approximately 9.1, and this is approximately 9.35. So you can see 250 megahertz bandwidth. This is the VSWR plot. Next, you want to see the radiation pattern, gain, directivity. You can go to the window option. Window. Here you can see the 3D radiation pattern also. There are various. tools are there gain versus frequency effective gain versus frequency axial ratio efficiency 
So first you want to see the 3D radiation pattern. You can go to the 3D radiation pattern, just press OK. So you can see from this, this is our 3D radiation pattern. You want to see the 2D radiation pattern, close this, 2D radiation pattern, define 2D radiation pattern. A new window will appear, here you will see add plot option, click on this because the antenna is resonating at approximately 9.3 gigahertz. So you can select the frequency in 9.22 approximately which is nearly equal to 9.3. So you want to see the radiation pattern in E plane, H plane, all you have to select E theta and this angle phi 0, click on this, this will give you the E plane which will give you the E theta phi 0. Then E phi phi 0, you have to select 4 plots E theta phi 0, E phi phi 0, E theta phi 90, E phi phi 90. E theta phi 0 will give you eco, eco means electric copolarization, electric copolar, copolar component. Similarly, E phi phi 90 which give you H copole. In the H plane, the copolar component and these two components E phi phi 0, E theta phi 90 will give you the cross polar component. So next task is to select the plot style. Plot style can be in, in the form of polar plots, it can be in the form of Cartesian plot. So we have option of Cartesian and polar, we generally go for a polar plot. So select polar, next is scale style. You can see the radiation pattern in normalized form or in terms of its gain value or directivity value, it depends upon the option you select. Scale style, dB gain, if you select this option, then it will show you the radiation pattern maximum value will be equal to the gain of the antenna at that frequency. So generally we see the normalized radiation pattern. To see the normalized radiation pattern, select dB custom, then press OK, then continue. Now you can see there are four plots. First plot is, you can see this one, this is E co, E theta phi 0. Second, this curve which shows you the cross polar component, third one is also a cross polar component in H plane but very small so it is less than minus 40 dB so it is not possible to show in this plot. Next plot is E phi phi 90 which gives you the H copole, copolar component in the H plane. So this is the radiation pattern. You want to see the beam width of this antenna for 3 dB. You can click on this for minus 3 dB because maximum value is 0 dB and uh, for minus 3 dB you can approximately you can see this is minus 2.95 so approximately 3 dB. So in the right side also you can see 2.9 this is approximately 3 dB. So beam width is approximately minus 41 degree to minus 41 degree. So 82 degree is approximately the beam width in the H plane and similarly you can find the beam width in the E plane also. Because this is a square MSA, so beam width in E plane and H plane are both same. Next is you want to see the gain plot, go to the window, gain, select maximum, it will give you the maximum value of the gain at every frequency sample. So press OK. Now you can see at approximately 9.25 gigahertz gain is maximum which is around 6.8 dBi. Similarly you want to see the directivity, there is an option to see the directivity versus frequency, maximum, press OK, this is the directivity. Next you want to see the efficiency, there are various efficiencies defined, antenna efficiency, radiation efficiency and some other efficiencies. So let us see the antenna efficiency and radiation efficiency. So this curve shows the radiation efficiency, this curve shows the antenna efficiency. In this way, you can design a simple microstrip patch antenna. In this design, we have taken the ground plane as infinite size. But 
in reality we have a ground plane of finite size so now we will uh, design the micro strip patch antenna on a finite ground plane select new then to design a micro strip patch antenna on a finite ground plane first task is select the z is equal to 0 layer and in this window you can see the real part of the conductivity is 4.9 10 to power 7 so it gives you the conductivity value of the ground so ground have a conductivity of very large 4.9 10 to power 7 which is approximately you can say very high value to define the ground plane as a finite size you have to first replace this value with 0 so after replacing this by a 0 everything at z is equal to 0 is not a metal it is an air so press ok now at z is equal to 0 there is no ground plane next task is to define the dielectric layer same dielectric layer you can take 0 0.787 then dielectric constant at a 2.2 .2, 10 delta 0 0.001 then press ok and then press ok now you can define the size of a ground plane generally the size of a ground plane is taken as a 12 h more or you can say 6 h more on every side of the patch so first design a patch at z is equal to 0 0.787 same procedure to design the patch now we have a patch at z is equal to 0 0.787 next task is to design a finite ground plane of size which is greater than the patch size by a value of 6 h on every side so you can see 6 h on this side 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 where h is the thickness of the substrate so thickness of the substrate is 0.787 so you multiply it by 6 so you can take 5 mm on every side so the size of the ground plane is uh, because the size of the patch is 10.2 by 10.2 so the size of a ground plane you can take as a 10 plus 12 into h so 10.2 plus 12 into h is approximately 20 mm this finite ground will be introduced at z is equal to 0 so change the z coordinate in this case 0 length is approximately 20 mm width approximately 20 mm so now you can see this green patch represents the ground plane and this orange color represents the patch so next is to uh, give the feed entity same procedure pro feed to patch so give the feed location press enter then number of segments for circle and the radius of the connector now we have designed a micro strip patch antenna on a finite ground plane now you can save this geometry msa x band with finite ground save next task is to simulate it frequency is 12 gigahertz so in this case we have taken as a finite ground plane it will also account the ground plane effect so it will take more time compared to the infinite ground plane size so in this case you can take less number of size approximately 20 then AC enable take AC layer as a 1 then enter 8.7 to 9.7 Take number of points as a 101 so that it samples our uh, range of frequency at 0 0.01 gigahertz press ok you want to see the radiation pattern click on this press ok next is to simulate press ok now this antenna is on a finite ground plane so in previous design we have taken as an infinite ground plane which is not the real scenario in a real 
application you have to use a finite ground plane. So, in this simulation we have taken as a finite ground plane. Next we will go for a stacked MSC. Now, simulation is over you can add graph as parameter d b. You want to see the Smith chart, Smith chart v s w r you can add v s w r and press ok. So, you can see the results and in the theory sir already told that if you take the ground plane size 6 h on every side more than the patch size then the effect of the ground plane can be neglected. So, you can see the it is also resonating at 9.3 gigahertz. You can see the bandwidth for 10 dB. You can see the bandwidth is approximately 250 megahertz. Similarly, you can see the Smith chart. This is a VSWR plot. You want to see the gain plot, maximum gain. This is gain plot. Similarly, you can see the radiation pattern, 3D radiation pattern, you can see 2D radiation pattern, this is your radiation pattern. This is at 8.7 gigahertz, in this left side you can see frequency is 8.7 gigahertz. You want to change this frequency, press N, it will go to the next frequency. So, now you can see 8.95 gigahertz, 9.2 gigahertz, 9.3 3 1 gigahertz. So, similarly you can see the radiation pattern at all the frequency. Next we can make it a circularly polarized antenna. Circularly polarized antenna you can design by giving it a second feed on a y axis at equal distance as given on the x axis. So, here we have given a second feed at the same location as given on the x axis on the first feed. So, you can simulate this. For simulation, in the second feed, you have to introduce a 90 degree phase shift. So, to introduce a 90 degree phase shift, you have to modify the inputs. From this modify option, you can click on this. Here you can see, we have uh, in given a 0 degree to the first input and 90 degree to the second input. So, then press OK, press OK. Every other things are same, then press OK. Now, you will see uh, this antenna will become a circularly polarized antenna. You will see the radiation pattern will give you the circular polarization instead of linear polarization in single feed antenna. So, it is over. So, you can see it is resonating at approximately 9.3 gigahertz. This is Smith chart VSWR. Now, we want to see the radiation pattern at float, we want to see the radiation pattern 9.3 gigahertz, because this is a circularly polarized antenna. So, in this case, instead of E theta E phi, we will select E left phi 0, E right phi 0, E left phi 90, E right phi 90 and the same polar plot and scale style you can take as a custom for normalization, then press ok, then continue. You can also modify the graph parameters. Uh, right click on this window, graph parameters, then start from minus 40 dB and with 0, because it is normalized with respect to the gain. So, end value 0. Step, you can take a step of 5 or 10. I have taken as a 10 as a step. So, now you can see the first plot is E left phi 0 and this is your plot. For second, this is your E left phi 90. Other uh, two plots are E right phi 0 and E right phi 90. These both values are less than the E left value. So, from this you can say that this antenna is left hand circularly polarized antenna, because the E left component value is greater than the E right component value. You can also see the current distribution. You can see the current distribution by going to the window option. Then in the window option, you can see there is a another option 3D current distribution display. Click on this and you can see a new window will appear. In this, 
there is option menu. In the option menu, you can click the show 3D scalar current. After that, you can see the 3D vector current option will appear. So, click on this and on this you can see this is your current distribution. You can change the size of this vector to go to the option, then set graph parameter. From this, you can change the vector size. Vector size is here 0.44. You can modify it 2, 3, any value. Then press OK. You can see now the vector size is changed and the frequency is 8.5 gigahertz. Press N so that you can go to the next frequency. So, 9.15, so it is 9.3 gigahertz, so 9.4. So, this way you can see the current distribution at any frequency value. So, you want to see the axial ratio because main property of a circular polarization is its axial ratio is less than 3 dB because axial ratio it is the ratio of major axis to the minor axis. So, if the major axis is equal to the minor axis, it will give you the value equal to 1. So, axial ratio 1 is equivalent to 0 dB and in practical scenario, we generally take any value less than 3 dB will be treated as a circular polarized antenna. So, in axial ratio plot at phi is equal to 0, the axial ratio value, then uh, click phi is equal to 0, then press OK. You can see the axial ratio curve in the entire range you can see the axial ratio is less than 1.4 dB. So, you can say that this antenna is left hand circularly polarized antenna with axial ratio less than 1.4. Every value which is less than 3 dB will be treated as a circularly polarized antenna. In general, if a value is greater than 3 dB and less than 6 dB, it is treated as a elliptical polarized antenna and greater than 6 dB is generally treated as a linearly polarized antenna. So, for single feed, if you see the axial ratio of load, you will see the axial ratio will be greater than 6 dB. So, in this case, we now designed a circularly polarized antenna. So, in today's lecture, we have designed two antennas. One is a single feed linearly polarized square MSA with infinite ground plane, with finite ground plane. Next, we have designed dual feed, a circularly polarized microstrip antenna with infinite ground plane. You can also design the same antenna using finite ground plane and see the result. In the next lecture, we are going to design a stacked MSA to increase the bandwidth because in today's lecture, we have seen simple microstrip antenna have a very less bandwidth which is uh, we have seen 250 megahertz approximately 3 percent. So, to increase the bandwidth, we will design a stacked microstrip antenna and we will also design some other antennas like uh, 3D wire antenna, very simple example of a 3D wire antenna is monopole antenna. So, we will design these two antennas in the next lecture. Thank you.